In my opinion, when we all talk about drugs, we are, we are talking about human beings that directly and indirectly are the ones affected by the decision makers. Therefore, I hope here today, this conference, we help to promote to the politicians, policy makers, frontline workers, police, researchers, educationalists and drug users advocates that the most important issue are the human beings. Do drug users have access to treatment and harm reduction in Macau? Yeah, we have. We have a harm reduction in Macau. We have needle syringe programs. We have methadone. We have also detoxification methadone in the in the, in the prison. Uh, we also have street uh, street teams from the for the for the NPS. For ten years, we have needle syringe program already. Three years on a row with no new infections among that use. What we do here is we have the needle exchange. Is what we provide. We provide new needles for the, the people that are using heroin. Instead of the, always using the, the old one and, the, and sharing the same, uh, we can provide the rapid, rapid HIV test. And the, also the nurse, also the nurse will give follow up to the, to the clients that have some moods that require to be changing the band aids every day, is to be clean, to not create any effect, any more infections. Here we provide the free meal to them. They also offer a free shower, free showers and clothing. In the outreach, they have a team that every day they will go out to some spots in Macau to collect more syringes that they are disposal in the floor. Did you have any problems with the neighborhood, like people complain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the beginning we have, we have in the beginning, but uh, here Mr. Chua is uh, really a good uh, communicative person and he could talk to the, to the neighbors, explain our work. The streets start to be cleaner, they could not see syringes around, so after some time they start to understand. What do we see in terms of the access to harm reduction in the region? It's, it's spotty. So we have harm reduction programs in a number of countries, but we just don't have the scale to reach a lot of the communities. There are some good practices in, in, in different areas. Malaysia has some very good examples. Methadone in prisons. Indonesia has methadone in prisons. We see community-based harm reduction programs in Malaysia. They have complementary rehabilitation and residential care programs available. So they have a mix of programs. You may find the whole component of harm reduction in Indonesia, needle syringe, program, uh, ARV, methadone maintenance. But the problem is if you give any sterile syringe to the drug user, people will say that you legalize. Uh, here and then the case when they came need to capture their face and then we confirm that case is uh, which one uh, who, who is who through that machine automatically will uh, uh, have the dosing of the methadone so the nurse will give the methadone to the case inside the nurse will through here give the methadone we need to capture again of your face and then give the methadone and then I bring the methadone I need to show so the nurse will check it and I need to uh, okay I have my methadone already please open the door okay and then the door just can open what is the current law uh, in Macau? Well, the current law now it's a uh, uh, consumption is to be uh, can be three months to one year in the prison well I think though all the drug users any drug users should not be criminalized for the for their consumption this is something that also I'd like here to Macau that in the future uh, none none uh, user will go to prison because of his own uh, consumption we have 11 countries in our region that criminalize or have compulsory detention for uh, drug use and this, this is a, a real concern because that just keeps people away from the services. When we talk about even methamphetamine users, 90% right, of them are not dependent on the drug. It's recreational casual use. Right? So they're not as much the concern as that 10%. But if we're demonizing the whole 100% um, and we're uh, arresting, um, incarcerating in detention centers or some form of compulsory treatment rehabilitation that's not going to encourage people to come forward to services when they do need it what is the UNAIDS position on the criminalization of drug users 
We shouldn't be criminalizing drug use. We should be seeing it as a health issue. We should be working with the communities, with the people at risk, and helping them access, on a voluntary basis, treatment for those who need treatment and support. We should also make sure we've got harm reduction measures in place, like needle and syringe programs, so that we can make sure we keep them healthy and safe from other diseases, HIV, hepatitis, whilst they're um, using drugs, and then work with them to help them come off drugs when they're ready for it. Some countries like Thailand and Myanmar have been looking at legislative reform and they were introducing the concept of uh, a minimum threshold of drug use, so personal possession, before it becomes the criminal activity. In Indonesia, there are still minimum uh, sentence for drug user around one to four years. This year, Indonesia is in process to uh, revise the narcotic law. NGO together with the National Narcotic Board, together with the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Social Affairs, has agreed to see the drug user as uh, from the public health perspective. Drug use by itself is a criminal offence in India and you can go to jail for up to a year. Decriminalisation, it would get rid of a, a lot of fear and apprehension on the part of the, the drug user, so the drug user can uh, no longer be afraid to access the services if he knows that, okay, I will not be arrested and put in the prison. What does the drug law say about drug use in Myanmar? Uh, currently, so we are the, uh, whatever the drug use is criminalized. So we are now the getting to, we are now in the process to amend the, the, our drug law, to particularly on the drug use, not to the criminalize, so decriminalization. Uh, we shouldn't focus only on the you know sub supply you know s suspension oriented approach. We need to focus on the other you know multi sector integrated approach like a public health approach, development led approach, other social support approach. What kind of services do you provide for drug users? We run a lot of programs in conjunction with schools. It's not that we are, we are uh, wanting to tell them to directly, you know, drugs are bad, just say no, uh, refuse, 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 you know, but actually understand that young people are coming from a place where they are exploring a lot of things and it's important for us to give them the right information. But it is also very important to build a lot of uh, key life skills in them. Uh, we look at a lot of the risk factors for specific specific young people who are more vulnerable to substance misuse in the future um, and we try to build programs that are developing their protective factors. Do you think that this conference can contribute to better understanding in other countries? And we hope that uh, after the conference everybody can go back home and, uh, and see what they can uh, improve and, uh, and not only um, at level of drug policy but also at the level of the, their own NGOs, their own drug treatment centers or needle syringe programs, having ideas that the people can share and to improve.